Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video and this video is about more advanced features about the Logitech radio panel. Now let me just get my aircraft slightly under control here. Now as you can see I've got a frequency, the NAV frequency. I talked about this in my original review which I'll link in the top right. How you follow NAV frequencies and COM frequencies. I've got a NAV frequency dialed in for VOR there. So it's quite useful for doing that kind of thing, VOR to VOR flying. Go and watch that video if you just want a bit of a refresher or you've not seen it yet. But in this video I'm going to be talking about the more advanced features. Things like ADF. Which I covered in a recent video as well. DME, distance measuring equipment. It's quite an interesting one, this one. And XPDR transponder squawk mode. Another interesting one. Pretty much fulfilling or filling in the blanks for the rest of the features, the more advanced features for this wonderful radio panel. Okay, listen, let's not dilly dally. Let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm at Exeter Airport. A couple of things I want to talk about before I talk about the advanced features of the radio panel. Question I get asked, will this work on the Xbox? Not currently, at least not this version of the radio panel. So don't buy it expecting it to work on the Xbox. It's for PC Flight Simulator 2020 at the moment. Another thing, I've got it stuck to my desk. It's a bit rickety rockety. I've only got one of these applied stickers. You get like 3M double sided sticky sort of uh, Velcro stickers. I've just stuck it down to try it for the moment. Uh, it actually suits. I'm not going to show you now. I'm not going to move the camera. But my yoke is just to the left hand side of it here. And when I'm not recording, I'll have my mouse down here. And it actually suits in this space. So I'll probably stick more stickers just to make it a bit firmer. But I could switch between different things. And it's not going to come off the desk for the moment. So it will do for this video. So if you see it rocking a little bit, that's why. I've just stuck it down just in the middle. I just need to make it a little bit more firm. Just deciding whether I really want it there. Anyway, let's get on with this. You can see the ADF frequency is 890. I believe that's default for many of these aircraft. If we come down in the Cessna 152 here, you can see just here 890. If I move the knobs next to the frequencies here, you can see that's changing one to one. So as it changes in the sim, or as, it, as it's changing on the radio panel, it's changing in the sim. Now we're at Exeter. The Exeter NDB is 337. If I want to get down to 337, it's going to take me an age doing it this way with the radio panel. What I would suggest first and recommend, use the actual controls in the aircraft to get it down to your first frequency, which is 337 for Exeter. I can put the ADF frequency on there so I can hear it. What we'll do, we'll take off, and I'll show you something that's pretty neat with this ADF part. There are a couple more exciting features, advanced features that I want to show you, but I'll show you this part first. It's actually in quite a good space on my desk there. I'm very tempted just to keep it there. It's very useful for Vatsim. Anyway. I'm up in the air, you can probably hear that ADF frequency. We pretty much bang onto it there. We are flying towards it. Now, now we're up in the air. We're not actually too far from, I think it's the Bristol NDB. We're not too far. So I'm going to, it's still coming down in my cockpit, coming to this view. I'm, I've not got autopilot a active, so I can't see what's happening with my aircraft. You can see it's banking a little bit. I can keep an eye on my aircraft and use the knobs here. Now I've got it in some kind of range. And I want to take it up to 414. Watch how quickly I can do this. 
keep an eye on my aircraft. I'm flying nice and straight and level at the moment. Still climbing a little bit. That's fine. There you go. 414. I think that's Bristol. And there you go. Bingo. I'm locked onto the Bristol F NDB. If it's not Bristol, do excuse my ignorance. You can see I've got a bank left to head straight towards that. So I'll do that. So there you go with NDB flying a suit, a NDB ADF navigation. I'll link the recent video I did of that, by the way, if you're unsure what ADF navigation is, ADF NDB navigation is. But with that, once you've got it into range, you can simply use the knobs then to change it fairly quickly. Go back to 337, shall we? Once you've got it in some acceptable range, Instead of the default 890. There you go. Now I've got a bank back round to the east, it looks like. And there you go. So instead of coming down and taking my eyes of what's happening, I can keep in my default view and use the radio panel for ADF NDB navigation. Now let's go to the DME. The DME setting. This one's quite interesting. Okay, so this time I'm in the Cessna 172, Exeter Airport again. Now I'm going to show you the DME function here, the distance measurements or measuring equipment. What I'll do first, I'll set uh, my nav one, I believe it's sort of Berry Head VOR. Now I'm not going to go over VORs in this video. I'll link the video I did of VOR navigation in glass cockpit displays like the Cessna 172 in the top right. But I believe that's the berry head frequency. Nav 1 frequency. And you can see on screen the identifi uh, identifier has come up. Switch my CDI to Nav 1. This video is not really a tutorial on, nav on VOR navigation. But I'm just using the CDI knob just to bring those lines. The two arrows pointing towards each other. And to bring the lines in. I'll join the lines, there we go. Up one. Set my autopilot altitude, quick and dirty. 1200 feet will do there. For autopilot aside altitude. I'll put my heading bug on the arrow of that BOR. So when I Go into heading mode. We should head towards it. Let's throttle up. Release the parking brake. And I'll show you something neat with that DME in a moment. Got a lot of torque to the left there. That's correct. So I'm just using a bit of rudder correction. And there we go. That should be fine. Up in the air we go. Just trim out. Go. Just make sure I'm climbing. And autopilot on, heading mode on. We should swing around. I'll just move my heading bug a little past that VOR. Now it's changed a little bit, which is correct. Okay, well, I'll switch to DME. Look! <laughs> Very excited. Look! There. But look, it gives you the distance to that VOR. Now, of course, you can do this in the Cessna 172. It's a bit trickier in the 152, I've got to say. But you can do this. You can go to PDF options and just go to bearing. But then you have to come down to this display. Take your eyes of what's happening in the cockpit. Or up above, rather. And as you can see, that's matching. Yeah, it's matching roughly to what this display is showing here. So that's all correct. We can turn that off. We don't need that, do we? Because... We have our distance to the VOR right here. So there you go, I'll show you. And that will keep the distance even when you pass through the VOR. I'm going to show you that in a moment. One thing I couldn't find out through any research I've done. I've not done a lot of research. But I'm going to leave it up to you, my fine YouTuber friends. I don't know what this is. You can't swap them. Press that button. You swap button, it will just turn off your displays. So I don't know what this display is, what this is signifying. 
And I'm not going to do any more research. I'm going to leave it up to you, my dear YouTuber friends. That'll be a question, a bit of homework for you. What's this distance? I don't understand that one yet, but I've not, I've not really bothered. I've not done too much research. This is the important one. The distance to the VOR. Let me just throttle back a little bit over revving the engine. Let me now show you the XPDR, the squawk code feature. Now, before I do that, set a squawk code in the Cessna 172. You'd have to come down here. So if you're flying on VATSIM, you can see it's 7,000 by default. You would go to, uh, let's just go back on the top menu, XPDR. Then go to cold and dial in the cold. Be a bit awkward, especially if you need to keep an eye on what's happening above. Easy way to do it with the radio panel. Go there, you can see the default call 7000. Use the inner knob to the unit. Let's say I want to set a squawk code and uh, VATSIM operators or the controllers have given me a squawk code of 1660. I can use the inner knob to change that number, the third number, and the outer knob to the unit to change this number. Press your swap button to the side of those knobs. Use the inner knob to change this number and the outer knob to change that number. So what did I say? 1660. 1660. Press that button again, the swap button. 1660. Look at that, I've set my squat code in the blink of an eye. Come down to this display. Zoom in. You can see that's a squat code. It's all set for me. If I move these numbers, you can see it's changing one-to-one -one on the radio panel and in the sim as well. Keep an eye on that green number there. Put it back to, what did I say? 1006, oops. 160. 1660 squat code. There you go, set. Okay, let's switch it back to the distance measuring equipment there. See how far we've got. Oh, we've got just over 13 nautical miles. Not quite linked on. Those lines are not conjoining, so let's just join them together. I want to pass that VOR just to show you. It will keep count when you've passed it of your distance from the VOR to. I think that's pretty neat. I do love these features. So no longer do I have to come down to this part and mess around with the uh, controls down here. I can do it all from the radio panel. Isn't that lovely? Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to accelerate time. I've got a couple of buttons on my Velocity 1. So, supersonic Cessna there. Cessna 152. Do it three times the speed. Now you can see that obviously not realistic. I'm just trying to get towards that VOR closer to it. Now, I'll press that three times. I just have to remember that when I slow down a little bit. Still don't know what this one is. Let me know down below in the comments, chaps. I'm not doing any more research on it. I've only done a little bit just to see if I could find out. Didn't uncover anything with the five minutes I spent. Five minutes I spent researching. And I thought that would be a good question for you. Now I'm just reducing. Oh, no, carry on. Carry on. Let's get down. Let's get down to. Go get close that VOR, there we go, we're getting close, let's reduce my accelerated time back to normal time. I believe that's normal time, yeah, the seconds seem to be ticking away nicely. Anyway, watch what's going to happen. Ignore the lines are not conjoined, that arrow should spin round the other way once we pass through the VOR, we pass through it. We've actually passed through it, you can see now this range is increasing. Just double check that. Bearing one, maybe it's because I had accelerated time on it, looks like I messed up. <laughs> the computers, you can see that's increasing as well. So we're flying, oh yeah, we're flying from because that arrow's down here. My mistake in the Cessna 172, this arrow. The inner arrow will point that way to show we're flying from the VOR. And as you can see, it will give you the distance from the VOR as well. So look, chaps, there you go. That's my video of the advanced features of this radio panel. With all those features I've just showed you, I've just showed you the whole 
capabilities, all the capabilities that the radio panel can do. And I think it's absolutely fantastic. Let me know your thoughts down below. Give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more videos. And I'll be seeing you soon.